Charlotte Charles and Rad Seeger, who's campaigned with the family, are here with me uh, now in studio. And uh, a very good evening to you both. Good and, evening. And thank you for joining us, uh, particularly in, in person. I know it's been a, a roller coaster 36 hours, roller coaster three years for you. And Charlotte, you, you said yesterday, and I was watching it live as it was all coming out, you said, job done. And, and you've had 24 hours or so to, to process things. Is that still your your overriding conclusion? Yeah, it certainly is. Um, but yeah, we haven't really still had time to sink anything in. We just haven't been to bed barely. We haven't slept. We've just been on the go. So it's still very surreal. Um, I don't think it has really registered with us the enormity of what we what we have achieved as a family and our little tiny team, Harry, but very emotional, um, extremely exhausting yesterday. Um, but yeah, we, um, we achieved what we set out to achieve, which was to make sure that UK justice was, was seen through. And, and it's so good to see a, a crack of a smile on your face because it, this extraordinary set of emotions I, I can only imagine you must have been through, but this is a moment that you do deserve to enjoy. And are, have you been able to a little bit despite the, the mixed emotions? Yeah, I mean, I, you feel lighter of heart a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's forever going to be broken, my heart, but you go from feeling extremely tense from, from head to toe, every fibre of your body, just not knowing what's going to come next, and then to be able to experience what we experienced yesterday and have that lift of, you know, three years, three months almost of, of pure fight mm -hmm. and being in that fight mode to then realising, wow, you know, this is, this is it, we, we've done it, we don't, there's no more fighting to be had, you know, what we've got left to do is to make sure it doesn't happen to another family ever again, and that's the next, the next part, but yeah, it, I feel, we all feel, I think, that, you know, we, we can mm. grieve and we can rest now. And what a legacy that, that will be for, for you and for Harry, and we'll, we'll come to that in just a moment, but Rad, I mean, did you always think you'd get to this point? I know you've been alongside Charlotte and her family throughout and, and maintaining that fight, but were there moments where you thought you might not get, get this far? Well, if I'm the sort of person that I, I will not take a project on or set an objective unless I know I can accomplish it, and I would never have led this family down the garden path, there has never been a shred of doubt in my mind that we would get to yesterday, simply because of well, the simplicity of it. In no civilized society do you get to kill somebody and walk away. And that's what this family were being invited to accept. And with you, you know, your help, Sky's help, it, it, it gave us that launching pad. And once that momentum built up, I knew it was never going to stop. And this family have been in the headlines consistently for three and a half years, despite Ukraine, despite the pandemic, despite the cost of living crisis, this family keep popping up in the headlines. And that's because I think those of us who, who, who look at this family see the, the injustice and the outrage, and that's just not how we do things. Never a shred of doubt in my mind. Well, uh, I mean, thank you for mentioning Sky News. My colleague Lisa Dowd, I think, is, is the one that saw the truth in this story and, and obviously followed the facts and, and the truth. But the person that deserves the most credit is sitting right next to you. Charlotte, Harry's mom, uh, and I have been friends for 20 years. Uh, we are neighbours. I don't know how many people know that, and, and that's our involvement. Um, her children are the same age as my children. They grew up together. I think this woman is a hero, and what we've all asked her to do, to front this campaign for us, some of us were peddling behind the scenes, but she's been the front person, I think is superhuman and extraordinary, and she de deserves nothing but praise. As the judge said yesterday, the calm, dignified, yet persistent manner of her um, conduct I, I, is of the highest order and, and, and should be recognised in uh, some formal way. Well, in, indeed, and Charlotte, I just asked Rad if there was moments of doubt over the last three years. I mean, wh wh where did you find the strength throughout that period? <laughs> How did you keep, keep pursuing it? Purely the promise that I made to Harry on the night that he was killed. You know, I had no idea how hard it was going to be. You just assume with a, a road traffic crash that, you know, justice is going to naturally follow. We knew the circumstances already by the time we'd got to the hospital that night or by the time we left, certainly. And I kissed his bruised lip and 
promised him that justice would be done and that's all it's taken. You know, that promise has just burned in the pit of my stomach since the, ma the, the moment I made it. Family were present, friends were present, they heard it and um, you never break a promise to your children. You, you make them a promise, you see it through. If they can't trust a mum or, or their dad, who can they trust? Well, I mean, that's inspiring to, to hear you say that. And as you said, ju justice has been served and you've, you've honoured Harry in, in doing that. Um, in terms of, again, reflecting on some of the words we heard you say yesterday, tw 24 hours later, mm -hmm. you, you also described Anne Sekoulis as, as cowardly. Is, is that still your overriding conclusion and likely to be the one you're you hold for the rest of your life? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we could have been cowardly three years, three months ago. We could have just accepted what we, be, what we were being told by the police, by the UK government, um, effectively the US government, that it doesn't matter, it's just a road crash, you know, get on with your lives. We could have just accepted that and just done as we were told, but that was wrong. It's totally wrong, it would still be wrong. Um, so, yeah, you know, we weren't cowards. We stood up for our child and we fought and we faced absolutely everything beyond what we would have ever expected. Um, so, yeah, I do think she's a coward. I think it would have been so much easier for her to have come back. This, none of this needed to happen. Um, she's caused that. And, and, Rad, you were uh, particularly uh, negative towards the US government yesterday. I mean, clearly, uh, Ms Sekoulis originally argued she shouldn't need to be in the UK for the, the sentencing because of safety concerns, and only when that was rejected did the government, the US government, step in and, and stop her from coming. What did you make of that? It was an extraordinary moment in court yesterday when the judge uh, criticised the US government and Ms Sekoulis because the US government said they had advised her not to return because it wasn't in America's interests. And what a thing to say to a, a British family. They are here living in our country, but looking after their own interests while they kill our children. That, that, that's not how it works. So yes, I am extremely critical of the US government. This is not a US government that I recognize. And something's badly wrong in their decision-making process. I know uh, my friends at the Foreign Office are, are really angry with the way um, they're behaving. James Cleverly has is, is agreed to a meeting with us. Hopefully that'll be sometime next week. There's clearly a problem here that, that has to be exposed. And as Charlotte says, we don't bear the Americans any ill will. They are our friends. It's the US government that's the issue. And we must make sure that not only are, are the people here, the Americans serving here safe, uh, we're entitled to be safe. We live two miles away from that base. Mm -hmm. And as we drive around, I don't know what's coming around the corner. I'm extremely upset with the US government. Sh Charlotte, as we uh, start to wrap things up, I, I wondered whether you felt uh, Harry's siblings, the rest of your family and friends, have, have taken a, a similar modicum of, of strength and, and closure from the last 24 hours. Yeah, they certainly have. You know, they, they also feel that relief, I think, just a huge relief. Um, Again, very emotional, exhausted, struggling to absorb the enormity of what we have achieved so far. And, um, but it's good to see. It's good to see that, you know, there are members of the family now that can smile. And I think along with me, they can look up and mm -hmm. say, you know, Harry, we, um, we, we done it. So things are improving slowly, but surely. And, but, but, but as you said, the heartbreak will, will never be uh, fixed. No. A above all, Charlotte, how, how, do you, how do you remember Harry? Uh, uh. Just before you answer that, can I say, he's left a massive gaping hole in our community. Um, yeah, he was, um, he was an amazing lad. Big heart, generous, kind, thoughtful, cheeky chappy. Loved his riding, loved his biking, um, covered many thousands of miles in just the three years that he was riding. Um, loved his IT, you know, another reason why we went down the, the route of accepting the video link. He was all for IT and technology. He was very intelligent, very wise young man and he had his whole future ahead of him. Um, 
he deserves a legacy to, to be built and his twin brother deserves to see that legacy be built. And, and, and you deserve to deliver that legacy. Thanks so much for joining us and sharing, sharing those memories. Thanks, Thank very, thanks very much, Charlotte and Rad.